Hello everyone, in this video we will be covering completing the square. So completing the square is useful for finding the turning point of a parabola. When we are drawing parabolas we will find this very useful and we will need to complete the square in order to find the turning point. In this video I will do a simple example to explain the method and then I'll do a complicated looking example with fractions and common factors. Now, when we complete the square, what we want to do is turn an equation of this form into an equation of this form. So we want an ax squared plus bx plus c to turn into a times x minus something squared plus something else. So it's the same graph, it's just written in a different format. And the usefulness of writing it in this format is that if I say p and q as a point, this is the turning point of this parabola. So notice that it's a minus p here and it's a positive p here. So uh, x minus 3, the, the x coordinate of the turning point would be 3, not minus 3. So let's learn how to complete the square. Let's look at the equation y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3. So I'm not going to factorize this, I'm going to complete the square to find my turning point. So what I want to make is I want to make a squared bracket. Now how am I going to make a squared bracket? So this is going to be part of my squared bracket and this is going to be part of my squared bracket. But this number does not make it a squared bracket because if I factorize this I wouldn't get a squared I wouldn't get a squared bracket. I'd get two different roots. So what constant can I add to these two to make these factorize to a perfectly squared bracket? So how I figure out this constant is I'm going to take this middle number, right? I'm going to say this middle number is minus 4. I'm going to divide it by 2 and I'm going to square it. Now this gives me 2 squared which gives me 4. Now this won't normally be the same as the middle number but in our example it is. So now what I'm going to do is and I'm going to add 4 to that equation but I can't just add something to an equation so I'm going to minus it off again so I'll be essentially adding 0. I'm going to add 4 and then minus 4. So I get x squared minus 4x plus the 4 that I added myself minusing the same 4 so that I'm not changing the equation and then I plus 3. So I've essentially added 0 because I've plus 4 and then minus 4. Now the point of doing that is because this now factorizes to a perfectly squared bracket. And that is why we use the number 4, and that's how we have to calculate the 4 divided by 2 squared to get the number that makes this factorize to a perfectly squared bracket. So factorizing that bracket gives me x minus 2 squared. And then we still have this minus 4 over here, and we still have the plus 3. Now, when we add and subtract our constant, the positive version is always going to be factorized into the squared bracket. Because to make a squared bracket, we're going to need a positive number here because the positive as the last number means that the two brackets are going to have the same sign. And to have them identical, they're going to have to have the same sign. So we have the minus on the outside. Now if I just add these two together, minus 4 plus 3 gives me minus 1. So we end up with x minus 2 squared minus 1. And now it is in the correct format that we wanted to convert it to using completing the square. So this will give me my turning point of 2 and minus 1. See, this is a minus 2. It's still a positive 2 here. And the minus 1 stays a minus 1. And this is the turning point of this parabola. So some things to note. Um, this number, when we divide it by 2, that's what's going to be inside the bracket. This number on the outside is not going to be the same as this number. It's going to be this number squared. And that happens to be the same as that number. So uh, the number on the outside is going to be this number squared. And this number is half of that number. So if you follow all the steps as I explained it, you will get to the right answer. Now let's look at a trickier example. Let's look at y is equal to 2x squared minus 10x minus 3. So now we have a number in front here 
and that actually changes things because I don't know how to make a squared bracket when I have a number in front here. I know how to make a squared bracket without that number. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that number out as a common factor. So what is going to be in my squared bracket? This is going to be in my squared bracket, or this term without do, and this is going to be in my squared bracket, and this isn't. So we are not going to take that 2 out as a common factor of this because that's not important. We don't need this for factorizing. We're going to make our own constant for factorizing. So we're just going to take the 2 out of these two numbers because it will not help to take it out of the 3 also. So let's take that 2 out as a common factor to get 2 x squared minus 5x minus 3. Now we are going to make this into our square bracket. So we need to add something in here and then subtract it off again. So what do we need to add? How to figure out what constant to add? We need to take 5 and we need to divide it by 2 and we need to square it. And that gives me 25 over 4. Like I said, this is not going to be a very nice looking example. So we're going to add and subtract 25 over 4 inside this bracket over here, not out here. So we get 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4 minus 25 over 4 because I can't add something in without subtracting it otherwise I would change the value of the equation and then the minus 3 is still on the outside over here. So now this factorizes to a perfectly squared bracket which is going to be the middle number divided by 2 and that'll be inside the square bracket so we'll get 2 uh, times big brackets. Now this is the most important part that people always forget. This this factorization creates its own brackets. So that's how you get these two brackets. But you can't lose the outside brackets. So I just turn them into square brackets so we don't confuse them with these brackets. But these brackets are still important. So we end up with two sets of brackets. One set brackets from the factorization and one set we already had. That's important because this 2 outside here needs to get multiplied into this number over here. We can't forget about this 2 multiplied by that number because it has to get distributed in. So now we've factorized this piece. Now all we have to do is multiply this 2 in and then add up the constants at the end. So multiplying the 2 in, we get 2 times x minus 5 squared minus 25 over 2 because I times the 2 by the 25 over 4 and it cancelled with the 4 to make it 2 minus 3. And now I just need to add up these two constants and I get 2 times x minus 5 squared minus 31 over 2. And now I am done completing the square. I have it in the format a x minus p squared minus q, or plus q rather. So this doesn't have to be a minus. If this was a positive 10, we'd end up with a plus here, and then this would change. So we don't always have a minus here. We just need to remember we change the sign when we're saying our turning point. And our turning point in this case is 5 over 2 and negative 31 over 2 and we are done. So in summary we need to make a squared bracket out of the x squared term and the x term and we add and subtract a constant in order to make our x squared and our x term factorize into a squared bracket. How we figure out the term we need to add is we take the middle number we divide it by 2 and then we square it and this all happens after we take out the number in front of the squared term because we only know how to do it when we have a 1 in front of our squared term. I hope you all now understand how to complete the square and use it to find the turning point of your parabola. If there are any other topics you would like me to cover in a video, please leave your suggestion in the comment section below. Happy studying guys!